Ted 2 is a 2005 American comedy film. The plot of the film centers on the just-married talking teddy bear Ted and his recently divorced best pal Johnny. When Ted decides to have a child with this human wife, the law declares him to be property and not a person, and his plan to become a father hits a roadblock. Enraged and delirious, Ted seeks legal help from a novice lawyer to get the justice he deserves. The film opens with a lovably foul-mouthed teddy bear named Ted marrying his girlfriend Tammy Lynn in a beautiful church. After the priest announces them as husband and wife, they kiss each other and walk down the aisle chirpily. At the wedding after party, Ted and Tammy Lynn enjoy getting drunk. Ted finds his best friend John Bennett sitting alone at a side getting drunk. When he asks him why he is sad, Johnny explains that he is missing Lori, his ex-wife from whom he got divorced six months ago. Just then, their friend Sam arrives, offering Johnny and Ted some drugs. Ted straightaway refuses. Fearful that his wife will kill him if she found out that he did drugs on their wedding day. Sam tries to assure him that he just did a line with his friend in the bathroom, and no one noticed it. Ted passes his offer after seeing the man who just got high, jumping from a window. He and Tammy Lynn enjoy their wedding day, dancing their hearts out. The film transitions to one year later, when Ted and his wife are not on good terms. Ted questions her about her extravagant shopping and berates her for spending all the money on her clothes whereas Tammy Lynn is furious at him for spending all the money on drugs. It turns out that both of them work at a grocery store as cashiers. They get into a heated argument when Tammy mocks him for not having an awesome package as her previous boyfriend. Ted retaliates by calling her a prostitute. This infuriates Tammy, and she slams a cooking pan on his face. A gruesome battle ensues between the two, disturbing the neighbors who start yelling at Ted for destroying their peace. Bewildered, Ted goes to meet Johnny at a bar, and tells him about his racking marriage. Just then, the bartender Allison hits on Johnny, but he rejects her advances. Ted slates Johnny for ignoring the girl's advances and advises him to get over his divorce and move on. However, Johnny fears that he will once again end up with the wrong girl. The following day, while working at his job, Ted meets Liam Neeson, who secretly buys a cereal that is intended for kids to eat. The customer repeatedly asks Ted whether or not he will be arrested for eating something that is not intended for his age. Ted feels exasperated by the lame questions and also by fighting with Tammy continuously. His coworker Joy realizes that Ted and Tammy are still fighting. She advises Ted to plan a baby as it will solve their problems and bring them close together. To save his collapsing marriage, Ted pitches the idea to Tammy who loves it and gets excited to have a baby. As Ted is not capability of making sperm, he talks to Johnny about it who agrees to help find a donor. They decide to ask Sam to donate his sperm. When Ted uses Johnny's laptop to email Sam, he is shocked to see Johnny's computer full with adult videos. Furious, he asks Johnny to get together with a girl. The best friends then decide to get rid of the laptop. They smash it together in an alley and bury it underwater. Soon enough, they go to meet Sam, asking him to donate his sperm. However, Sam declines due to his low sperm count of one. Enraged, Ted and Johnny leave the house, calling Sam selfish. Desperate to get the sperm, they decide to break into Tom Brady's house and steal his sperm to have a good-looking baby. Taking the guise of an AC technician, Johnny enters Tom Brady's house, telling him that his AC is too loud which is disturbing the neighbors. Cunningly, he cuts the AC wiring so Tom Brady keeps the balcony door open at night. In the middle of the night, Johnny and Ted break into Tom Brady's house and retrieve his sperm. However, Tom Brady wakes up from his sleep and kicks them out. Ultimately, John offers to donate his sperm, and Ted feels overwhelmed by his gesture. They make a pact to remain Thunder Buddies for life and leave for home. A couple of days later after Johnny gets clean from smoking weed, he goes to the fertility center with Ted to donate his sperm. Following Ted's suggestion, Johnny tries to hit on the nurse but faces rejection. Meanwhile, Ted roams around the clinic and finds a donor storage room with Dr. Danzer. He tells him that his friend is yanking out a sample for him so he can have a baby. Danzer recognizes Ted as the teddy bear who miraculously came alive. They share a friendly conversation and Danzer offers to show Ted the donor storage room. A moment later, Johnny arrives with the sample. Just then, Danzer receives an emergency phone call from his wife. When he leaves, Johnny forces Ted to see the sample referring to it as Ted's kid. Ted tries to elude him by slamming a sample bottle from the storage at him. In an attempt to scoop back the sample in the bottle, Johnny accidentally slips onto a shelf and ends up destroying all the sperm sample bottles. While Johnny feels disgusted by the sperms ending up in his mouth and eyes, 
Ted mockingly clicks his photo to post it online. Soon enough, Tamba Lin goes to a gynecologist to get herself inseminated. However, the doctor diagnoses her with infertility due to her history of excessive drug use. Having no other choice, the couple decides to adopt a child. However, the admin worker of the adoption center renders the couple unfit for adoption. She questions Tammy's drug conviction and puts Ted's legal status as a person into question. It turns out that the state authorities classify Ted as property rather than a person and have been investigating Ted ever since he put up an adoption request. Eventually, Ted gets fired from his job where he busted his ass for three years and his bank account gets terminated due to lack of a citizenship. On the other hand, while Tammy mourns over not having a child, she receives a letter from the government informing her that her marriage with Ted has been annulled. Johnny suggests Ted hire a lawyer and sue the government for civil rights. They find the best lawyer in town but he clarifies that the case will cost a lot of money. However, when Ted tells him that his financial status is not so strong, he offers to assign their case pro bono to his niece, Samantha Jackson, who has just passed her bar exam and is desperate to have her first client. Upon meeting Sam, Johnny and Ted are initially reluctant due to her lack of pop culture knowledge, but as soon as they see Sam smoking marijuana, they decide to hire her as their lawyer. The trio bond over their love for marijuana as they prepare for the case. They spend days and nights in the library, working on the case and Sam preparing Ted for the court of law. Amidst the process, Johnny grows close to Sam and they develop a very special bond. Upon Sam's advice, Ted decides his last name to be Clubber Lang once he gets his civil rights. Meanwhile, Donnie Ted Stalker is a janitor at the headquarters of toy company Hasbro in New York City. He informs the company CEO Jessup about Ted's story and how Ted was initially bought by Johnny's parents from their company's store. Jessup tells him that he already knows Ted's story. So Donnie convinces him to hire an expert attorney to ensure that Ted maintains his status as a property. This way, they could take Ted back with only a trivial degree of legal consequence and will be able to manufacture millions of living teddy bears, doubling the company's business. Jessup acknowledges Donnie for his smartness and decides to bribe Shep Wild, the prosecutor in Ted's case. The night before the trial, Tammy invites Sam and Johnny over for dinner to thank them for supporting Ted. After the dinner, Johnny talks to Sam about his failed marriage and how his ex-wife tried to change him, which made their marriage toxic. On the trial day, Shep Wild makes a manipulating opening speech in front of the jury, whereas Sam makes a very powerful emotional opening speech emphasizing justice. She tries her best to prove that Ted is capable of love and aware of his consciousness. The news of Ted's case spreads like wildfire. All news channels start talking about it and people start creating a mockery out of it. However, despite Sam's best efforts, the jury rules against Ted, not considering him a person. While Ted and his family are disheartened by the decision, Dunny feels accomplished and decides to abduct Ted. Seeing Tammy and Ted dejected, Sam decides to seek help from Patrick Mahon, a highly respected civil rights attorney, to overturn the court's decision. Since Patrick is a sucker for attention, Sam predicts that he might take the case pro bono and sets a meeting with him. Before Ted leaves for Manhattan with Sam and Johnny to meet Patrick, he bids farewell to Tammy, promising her that she will never have to take off her wedding ring. On their way, they stop by a diner to grab some food. While having lunch, Sam sticks a cookie crumb in a blind man's butt. The blind man stands up in a fury, but Ted tricks him by telling him that it was his five-year-old kid who pranked him. Just then, a waitress tries to flirt with Johnny, but as usual, he does not understand her advances. Ted tries to make him realize that the waitress is into him, but to no avail. However, Sam becomes curious and starts thinking about Johnny. Ted insists on driving to feel useful and ends up crashing the car in a forest barn after breaking multiple driving rules. Having no other option, the trio spends the night in the forest. All of a sudden, the three of them are in happy tears after they see a super lemon haze field in the forest. It turns out that super lemon haze is a type of marijuana that is extremely effective. The three of them get stoned in the middle of the forest. When Ted leaves Sam and Johnny alone for a while, Johnny opens up to Sam, telling her that he always wished to get high with his ex-wife, but never got the chance. Sam then starts playing guitar and sings a beautiful song, catching the forest animal's attention. Johnny gets lost in her beautiful voice and immediately kisses her. In the morning, Johnny and Sam pull down the vandalized car whilst eluding Ted's lecherous questions. They stuff the car with marijuana leaves and drive to Manhattan. Before meeting Patrick, 
Johnny makes his first impression by crushing Patrick's center table to pieces. When Patrick meets the trio, he sympathizes with Ted's cause but refuses to take his case, as he believes Ted has not significantly contributed to society due to his carefree lifestyle and has no positive effect on anyone. Dejected, the trio leaves the office. Sam feels terrible for letting Ted down once again, but Johnny comforts her. Seeing the lovebirds mooning over each other, Ted becomes furious and takes his frustrations out on them. Angry at the injustice, he leaves in a fury, wandering into the New York Comic Con, unaware that he is being secretly followed by Donnie. Inside the Comic Con, Donnie takes the guise of a Ninja Turtle cosplayer and requests Ted for a selfie. He takes Ted to a secluded area and reveals himself, earning Ted's anger. When Donnie tries to abduct him, Ted runs away and hides under a statue. He calls Johnny asking him to rescue him. Bewildered, Johnny and Sam rush to the Comic Con to save Ted. Meanwhile, Donnie finds Ted in the dozens of talking bears and starts beating him violently until he falls unconscious. He then rushes to Jessup, who is busy launching his new line of toys, and tells him about his successful kidnapping. The two of them tie Ted on a table, preparing to cut him open to see how his mechanism works. Meanwhile, at the Comic-Con, a tiny mishap gives rise to extreme chaos, and everything turns upside down. Fortuitously, Johnny and Sam arrive just in time and find Ted, a moment before Donnie is about to cut him open. Jessup freaks out and decides to run away to keep himself from getting implicated in any kind of a mess. Johnny ends up smacking Donnie's face when he expresses his envy against him. Ted apologizes to Johnny and Sam for bursting at them earlier, and the trio set out to leave. However, before they could leave, Donnie severs the cables holding up a model of the Starship Enterprise and it swings towards Ted. To save Ted's life, Johnny pushes him out of the way, takes the hit, and gets knocked unconscious. Ted identifies Donnie as the culprit from a group of Ninja Turtle cosplayers, and Donnie is arrested. Johnny falls into a coma and is escorted to the hospital. Suddenly, he flatlines and is treated by a team of doctors. The following morning, the doctor informs Ted, Sam, and Tammy that Johnny didn't make it, and that they must say their last goodbyes to him, leaving the group shocked. The three of them burst into tears while bidding Johnny farewell, but unexpectedly he wakes up, scaring them to the core. While Ted applauds Johnny for his realistic acting, Sam snaps at him for scaring her but Johnny instantly kisses her, calming her down. Just then, Patrick shows up and tells them that he is ready to take Ted's case. He apologizes for turning Ted away the first time and elucidates that Johnny's selflessness made him change his mind. In the court, he claims that Ted is self-aware and exhibits all qualities of personhood, demanding Ted be granted basic human rights. At last, Patrick successfully manages to get the ruling overturned. Ecstatic, Ted once again proposes to Tammy Lynn outside the courthouse. The film ends with Ted and Tammy leading a happy life together. They adopt a baby boy who they name Apollo Creed Clubber Lang. Johnny and Sam get together and bring Apollo a baby teddy bear, wishing that he comes to life one day and becomes Apollo's thunder buddy. This movie has a rating of 6.3 on IMDb. The budget of this movie was around $68 million and at the box office. It earned $215.9 million. I hope you all liked this video. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until then, bye-bye.